Thank you, Judy. My name is Marianne Wilkins. I um, am, live in the Chicago area. I've been here about 30 years. And when I moved to the area, I got interested in figuring out how to help my rescue cats. And I thought, how do I make my Dobermans live longer and also be more mellow? And we used our Dobermans as therapy dogs. So we wanted to look at different ways we could work with them. So we, all of our trainings, my husband and I over the last 30 years have been oriented initially toward our animals. And then in 2001, when I had a health crisis called breast cancer, they told me I really only had 18 months to live. But it was, you know, I caught it too late. It was, um, you know, out of 21 lymph nodes, 18 were positive. It was the triple negative. And they're just like, go have, you know, I did chemo, I did mastectomy. And they said, you know, we can't really do much for you. You know, that's it. And I thought at that time I had money in the bank and retirement and said, what's that retirement money good for if I don't use it and not around? So I looked at, okay, what are the alternatives that I could add and complement Western and allopathic medicine? And that's how I discovered Young Living Oils. I love, like some of you have mentioned, you like the smell, you know, like to have it diffused. I always loved aromatherapy and loved smells. I didn't like perfumes or clones, but to get an all natural um, oil, I loved it. So I like, okay, let's dig into this because there's supposed to be healing properties of essential oils. And then I've been doing energy work on my pets and saw how cool it worked with them. I'm like, okay, I need to dive into some energy medicine and learn more. I'd been through a lot of trainings with my husband with chronic healing system. And I'd just been exposed to Eden energy medicine. I was like, okay, let's do this. I was actually the first patient at Northwestern Hospital that had an alternative practitioner in the surgical suite while having my breast removed. They just didn't allow it. And I, you know, I was talking to the surgical nurse because they're the ones in charge of who gets into that room. And they said, no, you can't do it. And I said, you just told me I'm dead in 18 months. What's it to you if I do voodoo? You know, you know, what's it to you when I do? If it's something that gives me some comfort, why not allow it? And it turned on that my turned on that after that, that practitioner went on and went into 30 different surgeries with that physician and other physicians at Northwestern. So it was like an aha happened, I guess, during that surgery. But today we're here to talk about essential oils. I have over 20 years of personal use and also clinical aromatherapy training. There's extensive programs out there. So you can actually dive into each one of the essential oils, find out what the chemical composition is, find out what that chemical composition does within your body and how to use it. There's a lot of things out there that are called desk reference books that allow you to look up, like if you have peppermint oil at home and you want to know how to use it, you can look up peppermint oil. Or you can look up indigestion and they may refer to peppermint oil as one of the ones to use. What do you find in a restaurant typically when you walk out the door probably pre-COVID? <laughs> What's in the little bowl yes, typically? Peppermint. peppermint. Peppermint, right? Peppermint is one of those things that soothes your stomach after a meal. Mm -hmm. And so when you start looking at these um, reference books, you'll find things like that. And peppermint is just one of the oils we'll talk about today. With the time limitations, I wanna cover this piece of paper here, like what are essential oils? You know, what's your source? How do you get essential oils? What are the safety protocols behind using essential oils? And then let's talk about three different oils. And I've got ones with us. I'm hoping you guys are okay with opening them and smelling them and doing things like that. And I bought, brought a carrot, what's called a carrier oil. And we'll talk about that when it comes to safety. So what do you guys know about essential oils or aromatherapy? They smell, it smells good. They smell, they smell good. They're soothing. They're soothing. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, they actually are natural because they come from specific plants and are man-made. Yep, they're natural. They come from specific plants and they are not man-made. Correct. Anything else? Deborah, do you have anything to add? The, their power is what always impresses me. They're, they're very powerful. They're antibacterial, antifungal, uh, antiseptic. 
Uh, they must be used with care because of their potency. They, they, some should not be applied directly to the skin. Lavender can, others can't. Uh, in Europe, they ingest them, but in America, we don't usually ingest essential oils. Um, it, their power is quite impressive. That's so true. And it's nice that you brought that up, Deborah. Is there are different schools of clinical aromatherapy. Some schools in Britain, their, their school thought is you never put an oil directly on your skin, that you always dilute the essential oil. In France, they'll have you taken them internally. So I will tell you, I diffuse them, meaning you put them in a diffuser that kind of bubbles up and disperses it in the air. So I breathe it in that way, or else just breathing in the oil in by putting it on my skin and breathing it. I put it directly on my skin and I have also taken them internally. Um, you really want to know what you're doing and then we'll talk a little bit about safety. Has anybody, it sounds like everybody- What was it? Part of it is you look at what you need and look at what the oil is and then look to see if you can take it internally. Um, there's, depending on your source, and that's why we'll talk about the source, it's really critical to know your source because lavender oil, for example, more is exported than what's farmed. How do you think they do that? They're diluting it with other com compounds. So if you have impure lavender oil, and you decide to breathe it or ingest it or put it on your skin, what might happen? Who knows what they've used to dilute it with? The other thing is I'm a chemical engineer by degree. Um, and my, you know, I left IBM in 2015 as an executive and went and chose to do my love versus continue on in corporate America and my love being energy medicine and essential oils. But one of the things as a chemical engineer, you learn how to distill things. And when you distill things, what it is, is you're taking something and you're extracting something out. You can distill with water, pure water, which is not going to impact what you're distilling. However, you can use chemicals to distill and you'll get more out of it. But guess what? That distilled compound now has that chemical plus what you've distilled out. So you want to make sure that it's distilled in a proper way where you're not getting lavender that's combined with some other chemical. In the United States, when something is listed as organic, what do you think that means? Pure. You think it means pure? Pure natural. It's something like 5% of what's in the bottle needs to be organic. It's some minimal percentage. So it's really important to know what the labeling really means. If something says all natural, does that mean it's good for you? Suppose. <laughs> well, arsenic is natural. What's that going to do to you? <laughs> so natural, we think our labeling is clear, but you see all natural, organic. It doesn't mean all organic. It means some constituent in there is organic. And it's not necessarily a huge percentage. So you really need to know the source. So essential oils, it talks a little bit up here in the upper right upper right hand corner is that basically they're distilled from shrubs flowers trees roots bushes and seeds lemon is from the peel it's not from the inside of the lemon same with orange so it's different parts of the plants where they're extracting the natural compound from that plant and these can be used for pleasure the scent these can be used for just cleaning. Um, Deborah mentioned some terms I can't say in public because the FDA does not allow us to say antiviral, antibacterial, or anything like that in public. Um, but there are qualities to these oils that have been known for centuries. Lavender, for example, what do you know lavender does for you? Um, calms you down, what else? Where do you put it on your bed when you go to sleep? On the pillow. On the pillow because it helps you sleep. sleep. And with the current FDA guidelines, one cannot say as an instructor that it helps you sleep, even though it's centuries of documentation that will tell you that it helps with sleep. 
So it's interesting what you can say and what you can't say. But essential oils, one of the biggest things you can do is know your source. How do you know your source when you go and buy your vegetables? Where do you buy them from? The store, the market, the produce, the market, the farmer's market. Farmers market. So you're getting closer to the source by the farmer's market, right? Because yeah. you know the farmer hopefully <laughs> is picking them off their farm and bringing it to you, right? Mm -hmm. At the store, do you know whether they've been coming from a organic farm or non-organic farm? No. Some of it will label, like some of your best fruit will be labeled like from Mexico, from um, um, Chile, Chile, California, yeah, Chile, California. Yeah. California. So a lot of it can be labeled. And mm -hmm. so... You go to a reputable grocery store and you're hoping that the labels are right, right? Same thing with essential oils. When you go to buy an essential oil, you want to buy it from a place that you know the quality of the oil and you know um, where it was grown or sourced. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, I am a distributor for Young Living Oils and I've been doing it over 20 years with that company. And I would just put that out as a disclaimer. There's a lot of other companies out there, but what you do is you do your research and figure out it, when you take an oil, can you get the lot number on the oil? And can you contact the company and find out what lot it was, you know, how it was processed, when it was processed, where it was growing? This company, you can. You go to the store and pick a company, uh, uh, oil off the shelf, see if you can track it back to where it was growing most mm -hmm. times you can't so if you're using them for healing purposes you need to knew, know your source because you do not want something that's impure mm -hmm. you do not want to put something in your body to help you that might be mixed with another chemical mm -hmm. or might be five percent organic and the rest isn't so really know your source i've been to their farms i've watched their distillation um being in it over 20 years, it was one of the few companies that was around 20 years ago that actually had a medical clinic associated with it. They actually still have a medical clinic associated with them, but it's in Ecuador. So depending on all the AMA is going, it's either in country or out of country. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Down in the lower right-hand corner tells you how you can use oils. As Deborah mentioned, you can use them where you're smelling them, they're aromatic. It can be diffused. In a diffuser, you can put it on a cotton ball. You know, sometimes in the car, I'll take a Kleenex, put some oil on it, and put it in my vents so that as I'm driving down the road, I'm able to smell the oil. Mm -hmm. And peppermint will help keep you awake. Topically, you can put it on your skin. And again, this depends on which school of thought that you're in. And what we always say is start with the safest place. Where do you think the safest place is to try an oil out? What part of your body could you put it on and have the least amount of potential impact, but yet be able to sense it? It's actually your feet. Your feet are highly absorb absorbing and, and they're like the toughest thing. I mean, think about it. You're walking around outside. They can withstand a lot. Putting an oil on your feet, you're less likely to have a reaction on your foot. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? Yeah. So some things with safety. What do you think are some safety things around essential oils? You know, one thing is to carefully use essential oils around children and around children. Can you hear people when they're commenting in the audience or would you like me to repeat? Uh, I dropped you uh, for a moment there. I did not hear audio, just for a, a sentence or two. So one of the comments was you need to be careful around children and pets. Anything else that you think might be a safety issue? What's in it? What's in it? Yes. So I mean, perfect thing, because what I just talked about is no new source know that it's a really pure oil because if it's not a pure oil it can be damaged rather than help and it's better not to do anything than use something that's maybe not pure so first thing is know your source when it comes to safety 
Second thing is put it in your eyes. Don't put it in your ears. Why do you think you don't put it in your eyes or your ears? Likely to cause, you know, well, it hurts. <laughs> It will hurt in your eyes and will hurt in your ears. It's just not a safe place. You don't put it direct. If you're trying to do something with your eyes, you do it around or behind around the ear. You don't ever put it in the ear or in your eyes. That's one of the things. And with pets, you typically don't put things on their front paws because what do animals do with their front paws? They lick it. They lick it. But if it's a quality oil, you don't, most oils, you don't have to worry about that. It's more. What do they do sometimes? They rub it across their eyes. And again, you don't want them to get it in their eyes. So on a pet, you want to, if you're putting oils on pets, you put it on their you know, back or on their back paws because they're not likely to get it in their eyes then. So you stay away from eyes, stay away from ears. Most importantly, know your quality so you aren't putting anything that's damaging. Just a side note, when it comes to animals, one of the big things people are saying, don't use essential oils on cats. One of, I, I work with a lot of veterinarians because half my practice is such, um, animals. Mm -hmm. And the one vet got so upset about that, that she had cats in her office all the time. And so what she did is she started taking panels and cats' livers do process things differently. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the thing. They said, you can't use them around cats. Well, she took blood work over a course of 18 months and she diffused oils at every one of her office, her you know suites in her clinic. So multiple oils going all the time, and never had any negative results with quality essential oils. But if you take a tainted one that's maybe been distilled with a chemical or used as a chemical as part of the dilution process, that could kill a cat. So you do need to know your source. Same with children. So back to uses, we talked about we can breathe it in. You can put it on your skin. The safest place is the bottom of your feet when you're testing things. You always have, this is like just an oil. It's got, I think, I always forget which one's in here. It's got um, sesame seed oil. It's got grape seed oil, almond oil, wheat germ oil, sunflower, sunflower and olive. Whenever you have something that's not comfortable or you're getting a reaction, you dilute it with an oil. What's the first thing people tend to do if something is agitated or burning? Right. They go to the faucet and wash it off. Water will um, push it into your system. So don't go to the faucet to wash it off. Take regular at home, whatever oil you have in the cabinet, you know, whether it's Western oil or vegetable oil, we don't really like those because they're not healthy for you, but whatever oil's handy, grab butter, but don't put it under the faucet. So I have this with today. So if somebody feels like an oil is not feeling comfortable, we can put, you can put this on because a lot of times we'll probably be testing it on a, you know, your hand if you want to put something on you. Any questions so far? And the next way to use it is ingesting. A um, few years back, FDA made some rules that you had to label an oil either as being usable on your skin or being used internally. So this company has what they call vitality oils, which are all the oils that you can take internally. So like peppermint, lemon, frankincense, there's a whole litany of oils that you can take internally. There's a thieves blend that has been popular during the last several months because it's got a lot of qualities that you want that I'd put into tea. It's that clove, I think lemon, um, I always forget it, the ingredients, but it's a really- Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. And it's rosemary. A, <laughs> in rosemary, thank you. It's a really great oil. And think about that in a tea. It just kind of spices it up, plus it's helping you boost your immune system. So there's different ways you can take it internally is I put it in the tea, I put peppermint in my water. Some people with horses, when it gets really hot outside, will put peppermint in the horse trough to help their, their horses cool down. Um, I actually do put stuff in capsules, but again, you wanna work with somebody that really knows what they're doing when it comes to using things internally. Got it? 
I will say I've used many oils internally. When I back in 2001, when I spent time at Young Living's clinic, I was under doctor supervision, and they were showing me how to use oils internally, putting them in capsules, taking them, um, using them where I'd soak my feet. I, they actually went as far as they had IVs with essential oils in them. So, um, but again, that's doctor supervised knows they know what they're doing. And um, they have a clinic that actually does that professionally. Why don't we, we, I've never heard of that. And then IV? Yeah. It's interesting, huh? Very. In supplements. And one of the things that they'll tell you is if you have a supplement and it's um, made with essential oils in it, actually makes it more bioavailable to your body, that you're actually able to absorb it better. Yes? Do you have to be a cancer patient for them to do that IV treatment? Say that again? Do you have to be a cancer patient for them to use the IV with the center? It depends, I think, on the doctor that's doing it. I don't know if it's allowed in the U.S. anymore because Young Living moved their clinic to Ecuador. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some doctors in the U.S. that are using essential oils in treatment. Mm -hmm. Most of them um, that I know of are, if it's in Ecuador or Mexico or the Caribbean islands, mm -hmm. where they're actually using it full out for treatment. In the U.S., mm -hmm. you'll find people saying, you know, take this supplement with frankincense in, or take this homeopathy, or, you know, it's, it's, they'll say, you know, it more in pill form than anything. But I've done it all different ways. Any questions on how to use them? You guys ready to smell a few oils? Mm -hmm. Can you overdose on them? No. <laughs> You know, anything could be, I guess, done over, over the top. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like sometimes if you take, a lot of people got into taking thieves um, when they weren't feeling well. If you're not used to oils and you take a capsule of thieves, your stomach will burn really hard, you know, for a time. Um, there's a lot, a lot of things like Deborah mentioned, it starts small. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, you don't want to, there's in animals particularly, uh, they've got such great senses in this, um, as far as scent, they can smell much better than we can, um, is you want to start small. And anything like this, you start small. I can't imagine overdosing, but I would never say never. Because <laughs> you just don't know what people will do. <laughs> you, I think you work with someone that knows what they're doing, and you start getting educated. There's so many books out there. Um, I, I highly recommend what's called the essential desk reference, where it actually tells you about each oil. And today I gave, I brought what are called data sheets on each one. And this is the kind of information you might find in a desk reference. So let's start with peppermint. But before we start, what I want to show you is how would you, just out of curiosity, if I handed you a bottle, what would you do to smell it? But you'd go right here, right? Yeah. No, you'd be. What I want to tell you is there's a whole thing when you get into like perfumes or any of the companies, you start down here and you see what it smells like. And you slowly move it up and see what it smells like. For any of you that are familiar with the Indian um, method of chakras, you will find that as you bring this up, you'll have different scents as you move to the different chakras hmm. if you sit there and bring it up. But I'll tell you, most Americans they go <laughs> put it right to their nose and smell. So try when you get the bottle, I've got two bottles, bring it up and just, you know, bring it up nice and slowly hmm. and see if you smell something different. Some of you may and some of you may not, depending on um, the source it, of it depends on the source they will smell different but also it depends on you with your body and what's going on with your body mm -hmm. i can't when i was going through chemotherapy i could not stand winter for me i felt this smelled like skunk feet mm -hmm. everybody else is like winter green skunk how can you why would you even come there but it was with my body when i would introduce winter green into the field i would start basically off gassing or detoxing would be another term 
what was going on in my body. So it didn't smell pleasant. So I'd be curious when you pass this around. So smell it, and if you want to, if you want to, you can put some on your hand. One of the places that I use this, and what I'll say is what I, when I do oils, I tend to put three drops in my foam, rub it three times to harmonize it with my body. And this bone here, I come down an inch and over an inch. This is the last point of the kidney meridian. K27. Kidney meridian in Chinese medicine is the source. The bottom of your feet in the middle of your foot, kind of like where that pad is, is K1, kidney one acupressure point or acupuncture point. It's where the earth's energy feeds your body and comes on up. And this is the last point. So if you're tired, you can thump it. Another thing is you can put peppermint on it. Could you take a moment, Marianne, and just tell us from your personal uh, journey with cancer, how did you find the essential oils to be helpful to your recovery? Okay, I'm going to pass this around. This one people can smell. This one has more oil in it. So, and I have, um, like I said, carrier oil. You guys can work that kind of oil. The question was, how did I use the when I was dealing with cancer. And I will tell you, I use it still today. Three time breast cancer conquer. I have to see. Yes. I, um, what I would say is that I feel like the universe keeps giving me something to learn more and get more educated and trust in the work that I know. So um, one of the last oils we'll talk about is frankincense. If you Google on Good old friend Google, frankincense and the uses for cancer. There are actually clinical research out there on frankincense. What was that? Smell the room. Yeah. So this is what I was going to ask. I can smell it. When we brought it over, I said, can smell it. Yeah. So yeah. you mentioned source. Source. So I'm sure you get your essential oils from a specific. Um, Company. Yeah, I use Young Living. Okay. Because I've been to their farms, I've seen their distillation, and I've worked with them over 20 years. I really know them and trust them. So even from the distance that I am from you, which is probably about seven, eight feet more, mm -hmm. when you opened this, mm -hmm. I could smell it. Yeah. And it's really pepperminty, right? And if you, any of you were falling asleep in this lecture, what happened? <laughs> the peppermint wakes us up. The peppermint wakes you up, right? And it's not that much in the bottle. And this one's an empty, pretty much empty yeah. bottle. Yeah. And like yeah. this one, I'll carry in my car just to sniff as I'm, if I'm tired. Mm -hmm. It'll help you be awake. Young living. Um, it also, I you know, I would never put an essential oil in plastic. It's a demonstration when I, I teach classes about it. But if you put uh, this, like lemon essential oil in a plastic styrofoam cup, it actually starts to disintegrate the cup. Lemon and plastic. Yeah, any of the essential oils, if you have a high quality essential oil, you do not want to put it into a plastic bottle. Use, mm -hmm. use, you use glass or stainless steel, but I pretty much use glass and you know cups. And is that too potent for you? Yeah, it smells good. It smells good. Deborah, you can can you smell that peppermint? What's, what's interesting is I know I'm gonna put some in my car. <laughs> are both of those peppermint? Yeah, both yes. of these are peppermint, but one of them has stuff in it, so you can pass it around and actually put some on if you'd like. Oh this one, one this one has this one has some in, so continue it around if you'd like. Okay. What so it you, doesn't it doesn't hurt to mix these. Nope, it doesn't hurt to mix these. Okay. Many times you layer oils on. And they have a different effect. Some people will mix a bunch in a bottle. Like you were talking about, you want to make your own blends. There is a science to making your blends from a chemical constituent standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like my shoes. <laughs> you really want to learn what percentage of one kind of chemical constituent you have. But they have different qualities. But the other thing is, notice, did you put it on your hands? You can put your hands like this and take a breath in. Oh. 
body. So <laughs> do not rub your eyes. So the sheet here provides recognizable scent, right? All of us know what peppermint mm -hmm. is. It's typically a good fresh aroma. It can be diffused to create a stimulate, stimulating focused atmosphere. It can be applied to get a cool tingling sensation. Mm -hmm. It's like applying ice. So if you have a sprain or something, you can put it on your ankle or your wrist or whatever, and it feels like ice. Um, it also, um, you know, just can add, you know, oomph in your routine, in your environment, you know, diffusing it out. Mm -hmm. But back to your question, how did I use them? I use Frankenstein's extensively because if you go on PubMed and you go on, even in the Western world, frankincense has qualities relative to cancer. Mm. And I used it internally. I used it, on, I, I actually still do. I put it on my breast every night. Um, you use it neat or do you blend it? I use it neat, but I've been using them for 20 years. What's One of the things you'll find- What's neat? Neat is direct where you put it on without dilution. Like a lot of That's people- That's meat, like M E H N, like Nancy, E A T. Okay, neat. And a lot of people would blend it with like a oil like this to make it less invas invasive. Um, I just put it on direct because I've been using it so long. But let me back up a moment. There's a whole. Rub it to your hand. I'm so I actually <laughs> to be blunt. <laughs> and mine, you know, was under here, so I lift it up, put it on there. Although one of the things I'll back up a second. How many people put lotion on their body? Okay, and most of the people in here are putting lotion on their body. Do you know what ingredients are in that lotion? Water, cocoa butter, cocoa butter. Is there any propylene glycol, glycerin? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, a lot of times petro petroleum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are all known cancer causing chemicals. So what I would do is back up and say, what are you using on your body mm -hmm. and know what you're doing. I teach a whole class on detoxifying your environment. You know, we were talking mm -hmm. the ingredients in your Tide or your Dalmi or your cleaning materials. The first thing I talk to people with cancer mm -hmm. is clean up your house. Mm -hmm. get, and that doesn't mean Clorox using it. It means get rid of Clorox. It means get rid of Tide, get rid of Downy all these things and get look at your lotions if they if they're not something you can eat throw it away mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. things that can feed your body because your skin is your largest organ in your body mm -hmm. anything you put on your skin mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. is feeding yourself so that's why i said stop let's see what you're putting on your body if you're putting um oil or lotion all over your body that is you know cancer causing constituents in it I don't want you to put oils over top of it. I want you to clean up your lotions first. Use coconut oil. Mm -hmm. You know, use all natural substances. Look at your, I mean, you'll be surprised. You'll go home. There's a whole thing um, on looking for these chemicals in your products. Sodium lauryl sulfate. Almost every soap, every soap has it in it. Why? We love our bubbles. And your shampoo has mm -hmm. it in it. But guess what? Sodium lauryl sulfate is used in testing to aggravate or irritate the skin. That's what they use to test products to see if they fix. So they'll use it to aggravate and irritate the skin, sodium lauryl sulfate, and then they'll test whatever product that they think might cure it, right? Mm -hmm. Or fix it. The other thing mm -hmm. is it's, a known, it's also known to cause cancer. So you want to look around your house and say, okay, let me get rid of this stuff. That's everything. Yeah, <laughs> and this it goes back to how do you afford it? If you start getting rid of these toxic chemicals in your house, you can start replacing them with non-toxic things that actually you're buying from yourself and paying for it yourself. So there's ways that you can actually afford it because we're all spending money on shampoos and so laundry detergent, and laundry detergent fabric and, softener yeah, yeah fabric softener dryer sheets, or those things that you plug sheets. in the wall that are you know, yeah the dryer things you plug sheets. in the wall yeah. are the worst things mm -hmm. so there's a whole thing about detoxifying your environment that you want to do in addition you don't just essential oils are great but if you have if you're putting crappy lotion on your body every day 
You're feeding your body with whatever you put on it. Mm. How about Vaseline? Vaseline is straight petroleum jelly. I have two African-American children. Their friends are always like, you gotta put Vaseline. Mm -hmm. I'm like, honey, it's poison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've gotta find another alternative. And it's interesting because it's like, um, I think it's Carol's products. Mm -hmm. um, that's Carol's like, daughter. Yeah, she's the only one that seems to be out there that has good, nice, but also expensive yeah, products right. for African-American skin. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's hard to keep my kids from being ashy. You know, yeah. it's interesting. It's a whole different thing. Same with sure. hair products, yeah. um, whole different thing. But Carol's line is one that is using good quality. At least last time I looked, good quality ingredients that, again, if you can't pronounce it, don't put it on your body is a good, <laughs> a good thing. And really, if you can't eat it, you shouldn't be putting it on your body or inhaling it. Hmm. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing how many face products and endeavor i'm sure you've run into this with being an esthetician they'll be like organic all natural and then you start reading the ingredients and you're like this isn't good for me <laughs> it's really hard i mean dr hauschka out of germany was one of the few products for years that had really clean products for skin or makeup i got sidetracked there. so the goat milk um products I have to look at all the ingredients in it because some of them look really good and then you start looking at the ingredients mm -hmm. and I, there's a whole there's a list of things that you want to avoid I can send you that list and maybe you can get it out to this group and I think there's a sheet going around if you want more information mm -hmm. let me know your email and I can also send you information mm -hmm. so peppermint what would you think about it I'm thinking this is for my husband who likes to stand till three in the morning or whatever. It revives you and energizes you, but how long does that last? Will it last? Like if he did it for an hour before it, and then he got home an hour later, is he still going to be? Not normally. You it's, know? you know, it depends on the person and their met metabolism actually. Okay. And what it, it, you know, and how you use it. And that, you know, there's a whole thing around sleep with energy medicine that if you're not in bed by 11, you hit that um, gallbladder time of the meridians in Chinese medicine, and that will wake you up again. So there's a whole thing about getting to sleep before 11 o'clock when it comes to having a really good, healthy sleep. And you detox all night. You go your liver meridian, you, you go from gallbladder into liver meridian, which is detoxing, lung, which is detoxing, large intestine, that's detoxing. That's your night time. Most people wake up at 1 a.m., 3 a.m., or 5 a.m., and that's the transition times on those meridians. So the energy medicine program that I've taken is a four-year training program um, that you don't have to take it all four years in a row. I did like a six-year, over six years, I did the four years. It's amazing how you start to integrate the oils with the energy the Chinese medicine and the Eastern Indian and the Native American Indian techniques. But this gives you a lot more detail and I know I'm running out of time here. So lavender is another one. I've got one bottle of lavender here. You wanna pass that around? Lavender, we talked about sleep. This one, what I love about lavender, if you have a high quality oil, like I was really sunburned in Hawaii, really sunburned. And I put lavender oil on my face and someone's like, oh my God, you don't put oil on lavender. But because I trusted um, Young Living's lavender, I put it on instantly, it started to cool down instantly. I had a nice reaction. Had I used a different lavender that might have not been pure, it could have blistered and gone into more severe burns. So again, know your source, know your quality of the oils. So lavender, we all talked about it earlier. Sleep is the biggest one that people tend to use it for. It relaxes you. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is probably what I'd be giving your husband is <laughs> lavender to yeah, so help him yeah, calm yeah, down, the right? There's also thing, one blend called Peace and Calming that's great for pets as well as people. Like people who have rescue animals, one of the first oils I tell them to pull out is Peace yes. and Calming. 
I also tell about grounding. It's important that if you want your life and your body to work well, you have to ground into the earth. Remember how I said at the bottom of your foot, there's T mm -hmm. Kimmy one. Mm -hmm. In Chinese medicine, it's called the wellspring of life. It's a source of life. You're fed energy from the earth. Anybody know how many times lightning strikes earth a day? Millions, yes. millions really? of times. So the earth is getting charged and we as humans help the earth by taking in the energy that is fed to the earth. I mean, it's really cool when you start looking at the whole cycle of the earth, the human body, et cetera. But lavender is calming and I'll let you read the rest of that. And again, smell it from your, go through your root chakra, your sacral chakra, your solar plexus, your heart. You'll smell different things as you come up through your chakras. I'm trying this at night because I'm up late because usually I'm out singing somewhere and I don't get home. And you know, when you've been, when you've been out and you've been performing and you can't go to sleep okay. and it's like, oh God. So I'm going to try this on the bottom of my feet and see if that happens. So one of the fun things is when we, in an environment, if you put peppermint on your feet, it'd be interesting to see how many seconds it takes to get to your mouth where you'll be tasting peppermint. Really? There's, yeah. a, there's a question on Zoom and I can't get to it because I have to hold this. You go to the chat if there's a question. You wanna, or can um, you speak the question? Yes. Uh, Yes, I can I be I'm heard okay here? Yes. I, okay. I, I just wanted to comment on your discussion of lavender. I have heard lavender referred to as quote, the Mother Teresa of essential oils. Good for everybody, good for everything, uh, just good for us, you know. And I, I always uh, thought that that was humorous and an interesting uh, description. Of lavender. It's, one of the, it's one of the oils that if I was to say, if you were to carry three oils, lavender would be one of them. Yes. Because if you cut yourself or you get burned, lavender. Mm -hmm. um, the other one I would say is peppermint. Mm -hmm. And for me, as a cancer conqueror, I carry sacred frankincense with me everywhere I go. Um, they have two forms of frankincense. And what you'll find um, is there's different scents. Like if you lined up a bunch of peppermints from different companies next mm -hmm. to each other, you would smell a different peppermint, which eat each bottle. Some of it could be due to purity and the way it was um, chemically distilled or not. And others could be just where it was growing. One of my jobs, I remember um, with McDonald's, not, not healthy, right? With McDonald's was, <laughs> Um, looking at how to source more french fries because they're known for their french fries and their flavor. But what flavors a potato? The soil it's grown in. Mm -hmm. So if you grow a potato outside of Idaho, it's going to taste different. So high. And that same thing happens with essential oils, depending on where it's grown. So there's a frankincense within Young Living and there's a sacred frankincense. Um, Gary Young spent like seven years working with Oman government to actually go in and harvest sacred frankincense. So it's a real unique, and you can smell the difference between the two. There's not a lot in this frankincense bottle, and this is a brand one, new one, sacred frankincense. But as for cancer, when we we're talking about cancer, this is one that is on the website. When you go into PubMed, there will be research clinical trials that are run on frankincense that um, show that it's beneficial when you're dealing with cancer, and they're actually. Um, Tisseron Institute actually did several studies and has some information about different types of cancer. I've used it for me for breast cancer. Um, and I know it's used with other cancers as well. And again, with the frankincense, I diffuse it, I put it on me, and I actually take it internally. But again, I've taken it internally under someone's supervision that really knows what's going on. I also, the Vitality frankincense, and what I'll tell you is the bottle of Vitality is labeled different and it, because it can be taken internally than the one that's um, on your skin. But it's the exact same oil in the bottles. It's just the FDA requires um, companies to label one of ones that can be taken internally. So, so the Vitality you could take internally? Yeah, the Vitality oil is labeled to be taken internally. And you'll find that frankincense um, is one of the oils that can be taken internally. And so 
Go ahead. How do you take it? I take it, you can buy capsules that are empty from Whole Foods. I put it in a capsule and do it that way. I also put it in my tea and drink it. Um, I can't do that because then that would be considered prescribing. So the question was how many drops? In a public environment, I can't really get into that because there's so many things that influence that. It in, you know, when you're new to essential oils, you can't handle as much as somebody that's been using them for a while because your body starts to detox when you do essential oils and you start detoxing your home from these heavy chemicals and the lotions and the shampoos that have all this stuff in it that is not promoting your health. Um, it, that, those are the kinds of things that start impacting it. In my energy medicine practice, I use kinesiology a lot. I don't know, did Ralph ever show people kinesiology and how you can test things? You can actually test substance to see whether they're for your highest good or not. We'll do that. So cool. <laughs> so cool. cool. We're, we're at 1227. Do we have time? It, it, you, this is this your is show. Oh, okay. this is. So there's several ways to test. And the easiest one is called the pendulum test. So it's using your body as a pendulum. So like I stand up here like this and just say, my name is Marianne. What happens? I go forward. If I say my name is Fred, I go backwards. Um, so if you guys stood up and did that, you would have the same reaction. Oh, so, so what I could do, okay, peppermint. I'm just going to put it here and I'm going to say, is it for my highest good? Well, I right away went forward. It could be no, because I've had so much on me, but so it could have gotten any answer, but is this for my highest good? So one of the things that you can do in a grocery store is you can pick up something like an avocado, avocado and say, is this for my highest good? And you'll go forward. And if it's not, you'll go backwards. It's interesting um, with organic and non-organic. You can actually, and like one of the, my clients was testing me and she'd eaten two avocados. And so she was testing me on this avocado. And I didn't know she'd eaten two avocados before I showed up. And so she tested wheat, like it wouldn't be for her highest good. And normally avocados, are such a good fact for your brain that most people, it's a good thing. And then I said, what's up with this? I said, did you eat some before? And she's like, yeah, I ate two. So they didn't need a third avocado. So you can use substance testing. There's other ways. Anybody want to come up and be tested? <laughs> Do you want me to put a mask on next year? Or are you okay? okay. Just remember you're going to be on Zoom. Okay, so I'm gonna do it so everybody can see. And so what I'm gonna do is just do a simple test. It's a spleen test and it looks like this. So I'm gonna pull your arm out to the side. Wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to get you on this. Um... So I'm just gonna do it back here so you guys can see it. And just hold your arm to the side and I'm gonna pull out gently. Pull, pull to your side and I'm gonna pull. See, it's, and actually I shouldn't use that test because most people are weak. I'm gonna do this one, it's easier. For arms straight, I'm gonna press down and you just resist, okay? And then I'm gonna break the energy and resist. See the difference? <laughs> I'm gonna do beautiful figure eights here, strengthen it up and meet my pressure. See the difference? So let's take this bottle of peppermint, put it right there. And is this for your highest good? Okay, just bear with me. See? This is for her highest good. Now, let me hand that bottle down. No, I don't want to keep it. No. <laughs> Put it here. Hang on to this. Got it there? What is this? Green tea. Okay. Is this for your highest good? So, yes, green tea would be good. Anybody have some junk with them? Like candy, candy bar? bar. <laughs> Anybody have a candy bar? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this is kinesiology, it's energy testing. And so I do this with people. She's just gonna hold it. Now we have a candy culprit on tape. Yeah. <laughs> on video. Is this for her highest good? See, it's bouncing. You, did you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. And so kinesi 
And so kinesiology can be used to figure out whether things are good for you. And what I am testing is in this moment, is it something that's good for you? So in this moment, that would not be good for you. Now, if you're dog tired and hungry, and that was something that was going to give you some oomph, like sometimes it's surprising people will test positive for Coke. But Coke has caffeine and sugar. And if you're basically burnt out your adrenals mm -hmm. and need something to pump you up, right then and there, Coke might be good for you. Even mm -hmm. though it's not something that we would consider good, good, right? Right. So energy testing can be used to figure out, back to your point, what should you use and how much. And it's one of the things I teach when I teach my energy medicine classes is how do you substance test? How do you look at things like food or supplements to figure out whether it's good for you or not? And you can be sure only vitamin C bottles are on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, how do you figure out which one's good for your body? Because what's good for your body may not be good for your body or your body. You actually can learn substance testing to figure out which one's best for you. It's really cool. Um, when we were here before, you gave the, the little bobbies. Uh, remember, Judy, the last one? Yes, yeah, she, was, she wasn't here. Um, um, but there was a, um, a company that a business that donated some um, peppermint essential oils yeah. for the group um, about a month ago. Yeah, yeah, I didn't bring any samples. I'm sorry. Did everybody that's, that's your company, right? Did, did have the, no, no, oh, that's, that's a different one. So, okay. did everybody tr try sacred craft? Frank, I like it. Smell it. Oh, yeah. I like the way that's I would love that. <laughs> it's not cheap, but um, <laughs> my belief is it's you get what you pay for when it comes to essential yeah. oils. This comes out of Oman. It's very restricted use. You know, only I believe only Young Living is actually able to farm in Oman for this. Um, frankincense. Um, so you, you, if you get something for $3 or $10 or $20, you know it's not either coming from there or you know it's been diluted. Um, How much does that cost? This is around 80 some dollars for this bottle. Mm -hmm. But you only need to put a drop or two on mm -hmm. and it's like 250 drops I think in the bottle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, and so it depends on where you're at. Like when I'm in the midst of my cancer, when I was dealing right when after I got diagnosed, I used a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Now I don't go, I don't go through a bottle a month, although I love it. And I, you know, I use my oils every day. Um, but there's also research now coming out on myrrh mm -hmm. and PubMed. I don't know, I've got myrrh up here if you want to smell it. Um, there's other oils that are using, they're using for cancer. If nothing else, my argument is these things can't hurt when it comes to cancer and might help. My belief, my personal journey, I believe that when I went down, you know, I did the Western treatment and I complemented it with energy medicine and I complemented it with essential oils. The reason why I did that is I saw my animals get benefits from these oils. I saw my animals get benefit from energy medicine. And I always joke, I do animal testing, but it's a good thing <laughs> in the sense that they don't have the, you know, I'm an engineer, so I want all the science behind things. And the dog doesn't care about the science. They just want to, they just know if it works or not. Can you take just a moment and step back to when you were the first patient at Northwestern who combined bringing in somebody with energy when you were going through your surgery. And then what happened after you got the diagnosis, mm -hmm. which I always say it's human being telling me how long I'm going to live, what you're going to mm -hmm. know. Um, and all of a sudden, here you are X number of years later. And they, did any doctor say to you, what did you do to absolutely baffle us with the fact that you're still alive? No, I've never had that question asked. It's interesting because I do have clients with bone breaks, you know, where um, my sister, when she was 65 years old, was skiing downhill and face planted, well, not face planted, arm planted and broke her bone. Um, they put her in a sling and said, come back in six weeks and we'll figure out what's going on, right? Um, she went back in six weeks and the break was completely healed and everything was fine. And I combined energy medicine with essential oils and also femur technology, which is another thing I do. Uh, but they kept looking at the x-rays saying, well, it must not have been broken. 
So now she recently, she just turned 70 and she um, broke some bones in her feet. She's like, get your butt over here. I need you to work this so that I can, you know, because they're telling her eight to 12 weeks and she's a woman that walks seven miles a day. So for her to be trapped in a boot and being told eight to 12 weeks before you can walk, um, she's going crazy. She's like, get over here and work with me. And it'd be interesting to say, so the bone break is like something that's really solid proof that that x-rays before, x-rays after. So it'll be interesting with her foot. But I've had several clients where they'll have that, but they're never asked why or what did you do differently. It's just like they keep looking at the x-rays going, wait a second, something happened here. Well, the statute you were given, you know, basically a life sentence. And now you basically just proved that. Yeah, and, and when I was re-diagnosed in 2015, they were like, oh, you've got to do boom, 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 um, or else. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I did a little bit of it, and I did a lot of essential oils and a lot of, um, and I believe, you know, part of it is I really believe in what I do. And I'm in a very different spot now than I was I mean, in 2001, as an executive, I traveled the world. Um, my team was all over the world. I was spending a month in India, home for two months, a month in India, home for two months, or two weeks down in Argentina or Brazil or Egypt, you name it, and was traveling all over. My mindset wasn't into how could I do self-care. And one of the things with Eden Energy Medicine is we really empower you and teach you how to get your energies moving. And how do you improve yourself? Because the bottom line is you're with yourself 24 seven. You come to see me at my clinic. I only can see you a couple hours a week. Or, you know, in some cases I have people two, three times a week if they're in the midst of a crisis. But generally speaking, it's once a week or once every other week. You're with yourself all those other times. So you have to do things to help yourself. And I will tell you when I got diagnosis, it's the scariest thing in my life. You know, at the time I was 40, I was told I was too old to get pregnant and now I was too young to get cancer, like within like three months of each other. <laughs> it's like, you're too old, you're too young. And then, um, you know, the statistics look really bad and the doctor's like, well, really the statistics either you're gonna live or you're gonna die. Um, you know, what are you gonna do? How many of you have had cancer in the room? Okay. My husband. Okay. And so there's things that you can do from an energy standpoint, from an essential oil standpoint. It's like what I would say is learn more about essential oils. Um, but the biggest thing is know your source. That's the thing. And start looking at your bottles, your shampoo bottles, start looking at your cleaning supplies. You know, vinegar you can eat, right? Mm -hmm. It's also a really good cleaning supply. Mm -hmm. And, you know, pets, pets that have issues, I said, okay, your pets are on the floor, right? Their paws are there. You just, you know, scrubbed your floor with whatever chemical you got in the house and your poor animals are walking around. Guess what absorbs what really well? The paws. Mm -hmm. And so that animals, cat, dog, whatever is absorbing the chemicals that you just put on the floor. You washed your sheets and whatever chemically and, you know, um, compound in your Tide or whatever and you put downy in it to make it smell better. You read those ingredients, they're not good for your animal sleeping in your bed, maybe. Guess what? He starts to itch. You know, and all of us have a tolerance, you know, and then we reach that tolerance, and then all of a sudden we see skin, you know, issues, itching, licking. And then, you know, as we get into Chinese medicine, I'd be looking at how well is your liver working? How well is your gut? Because your gut health. I mean, all of you have probably heard about gut health and how mm -hmm. important it is. All those factors will impact like whether your dog's itching. If the food isn't good, guess what? It comes out through the skin. Mm -hmm. It's a, yep. No, but I think to what you said, um, I think, well, first of all, your background is now, I think that all get a cancer uh, health supporter for many people for the last 30 years. And it started originally to what you just said, where it was with my father. We only did, uh, you know, allopathic surgery and whatever. And then two female friends of mine who had breast cancer one 30 plus years ago. And she did both 
what's in it, complementary and allopathic with Chinese medicine and uh, you know the different oils and stuff. And another one did the same. And both are still alive today. And the one basically they told her you don't have any chance either. And that was 35 years ago. Yeah. So that's why I find it particularly wonderful that now people are waking up to the fact that you can combine therapies. Yeah. And there's a lot of physicians out there that will encourage you to. Um, I know when I was really active with cancer in 01, Gilda's Club, you know, you could go in there and volunteer your time and you, you'd have people that were doing yoga, that were doing, you know, meditations, that were doing other things beyond the normal allopathic stuff to give you some other options. Um, and the bottom line is nowadays we're also stressed out. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're stressed out, you're creating hormones that are not healthy for your body. And you need to figure out ways to calm down what essential oils. You can do it many ways. You can do something just as simple as this, which holds, uh, there's neurovasculars on your forehead and then there's neurovasculars that act here. How many of us go like this when, when something happens? Like, <gasps> or, <gasps> In the Chinese medicine, you'll find a lot of it's observation. They naturally, you naturally go like this when you're upset. Or how many people go like this? Like, oh my God. These are natural positions that there's actually points that you're holding that calm your body down. And the first thing, the best thing we can do for ourselves is calm. So there's things you physically can do, but there's also oils that if you love them and they're calming, you can diffuse them in the house and it starts to lower your anxiety and stress. So start there is a simple thing. Find what you love. Which one's that? Valor. Here's Valor. It's funny. I didn't bring a lot of oils because I didn't want to carry things around. Valor is um, nicknamed chiropractor in a bottle, but it's a mixture of blue tansy, black spruce, camphor, geranium, and frankincense. Mm. Smell it. It's very thick. Mm -hmm. It's blue. Mm -hmm. it, it just goes. Mm -hmm. Valor is one that gives courage. Um, it, you put it on your feet. It's like one of the oils when I'm working with people, I use on everybody. Mm -hmm. Particularly if you're in a state where you've got some illness or disease, Valor gives courage. Mm -hmm. It also helps you ground because there's a wood oil in it. And grounding to the earth is something that's really important if you wanna stay on the earth. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will tell you is if someone's dying, you do not wanna ground them to the earth mm -hmm. because then it makes it more difficult for them to transition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, I do a lot in the animal world with aging animals and also transitioning animals, making it easier for them to leave their physical body. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that you do, and, and it's funny because my brother died like four years ago. Um, like he was diagnosed with cancer and it was gone three weeks later. Mm -hmm. And I rushed up to Minneapolis and in the University of Minnesota Hospital. And the only way I think I could get to was his feet. And I'm like, I know I'm not supposed to work the feet or the hands, but I just need to touch him. Mm -hmm. And I put my hands on his feet, started working his feet. And he just started flailing. Like, and he hadn't moved much. They had him on ventilators and everything. His whole body was flailing. I'm like, okay, got the message. Because when someone's passing and transitioning into whatever's next, you can't ground them to the earth. You shouldn't ground them to the earth because it makes it more difficult for them to leave their physical body. It's wild. And if you watch animals leave easily, like chakra clearing, you clear chakras on an animal when they're in the, close to transitioning, they tend to leave without even needing a veterinarian assisting. Now, all my past, over the last several years, most of my animals have died in my arms, just kind of like take that breath and uh, no panic, no fear, just able to leave their body gracefully. Hard to do, but yet beautiful that they don't have to go through the trauma mm -hmm. and it takes energy to die mm -hmm. and so you, you know, there's a whole thing in Chinese medicine I'm going way off is that when you come into life radiant circuits light up the first eight cellular divisions and when you leave your body the radiant circuits are used to take and lift your soul or your spirit out of your body mm -hmm. 
and you need energy to do that. And without that clearance or having your chakras clear, it makes it harder to pass. And if any of you, um, there's a whole um, article, a whole class on death and dying with energy medicine. The PDF is free. Um, the class, there's a video class with Dr. Sarah Allen teaching it that's available, but the PDF, if anybody wants it, it's what you can do as a caregiver. You know, what can you do as family? What can you do with a person that's actually dying? Techniques that you can use. So if anybody wants that, let me know and um, I can easily share that with you. Thank you. We're and well into an over. hour over. And I mean, <laughs> oh, we, we could go, go yeah, we could go for well, forever. Well, I to come back. I mean, I, I teach, like I said, I teach energy medicine, which is all- We know more about the different classes and things. You can yeah. How do we classes stay in touch with you? Okay, and if you put your name on the list, I can show you that. The one thing is the first year of training for Eden Energy Medicine is four weekends, three-day classes. I've just started up the class and you can still jump in. And it's all about self-care and learning how to test like what I did with you, learning how to test yourself and others. Um, and also techniques that you can do to help peace and calming, you know, where you're actually doing techniques, holding points on the head that zens people out, how you can do some techniques on the feet. The first year I'm in the midst of doing it starts every year between April and June. So you can still jump in. Um, that's phenomenal. And I took training with no intent of ever teaching it. And now I teach it. I host the second year of the certification. <laughs> so how, how did doing the eating technique um, change your home? Oh. It changed me from, the biggest obvious thing is I would go to providers to get a massage or I'd go to a provider to get fixed. You know, go to a chiropractor for an adjustment. Um, now I do stuff daily to help myself. I feel like I'm empowered. Like I can make myself um, feel better by doing some simple techniques. If you get online and look up Donna Eden, she's 79 years old and she's got the vitality of probably, I swear she's got the energy of a five-year-old, six-year-old. Just go, 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 go. This is a woman that's done it daily. She had MS diagnosed in her twenties and she couldn't walk, she was in a wheelchair. And she had two toddlers and her husband had left. And she's like, I gotta get moving. And so she's on stage teaching this stuff at 79 years old, just vital as can be. And so age is not, it's just a number. Mm -hmm. It's what I see in the energy medicine community is people really, um, by doing these techniques, you, you're empowered. And I'd say that's the biggest difference for me. Do I still go to providers? Yes but I don't go to them with that. They're the only reason, only way I can get fixed. They're kind of like beneficial, you know, supplemental. So the clinic that you belong to, where is that? Is, is it's in Roscoe there? Village. I, I have share space at Tribe Healing Arts. There's like, used to be like 40 practitioners that shared the space, um, but there's now probably with COVID probably 25 of us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, appointments you know, by appointment only. I'm there Tuesdays and Thursdays in person. I work so when on, you call this number. Yeah, call that number and just let me know or send, you know, go on my website and do a contact me and let me know what you're interested in. Okay. Um, but I do uh, work with individuals um, and I also do classes and groups. Is that where you do the, the tell, Tellington? The, two Tellington, um, the Tellington Touch is normally, I do it on people there, but I, if you're animal right now, so crazy in this world with insurance. Um, I'm actually trying to find a vet office to work out of because so many places won't let you work on animals because they're concerned about liability. There's a, hmm. there's a fabulous vet up in Evanston. Yeah, now. share the name because I, I, I know. I, I will send it to you because we had a dog that was dying of cancer and we took our pet up there for that treatment and our other dog had chiropractic treatment up there with another vet. With Sig, probably. Yeah. Sig, Sig Hansen yeah, is Sig one. Hansen. Yeah, yes. he's been doing chiropractic. He's a human chiropractor that's been doing animal work for right. 30 years, I think. But this this office, you love it the minute you walk in. It's tropical plants, and she has an aromatherapist. And they, you walk in, and it's like aromatherapy, and you're in a tropical jungle. I love it. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll look up her name. Yeah, because I, I work with a vet in Hoffman Estates in um, Elgin, but most people in the city don't want to drive this. She's right up in Evanston. It's very okay. convenient. And I will say, to me, driving out to Hoffman Estates in Elgin is well worth it because the woman does essential oil. She's taught most of the other people. She's been doing it 30 years, chiropractic, acupuncture, essential oils, laser, mm -hmm. you name it, homeopathy, any alternative she's been doing. For animals? For animals, yeah, Beautiful. as a veterinarian. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So thank you guys. This is, I love this. Yeah. Thing. Thank you, Marianne. We will definitely have you come back. Most definitely. I enjoy this. I, like I said, Ralph was one of my students. Those of you know Ralph. Thank you. And then did anybody need any V6 to put on their oil that they, everybody okay with what they put on their hands or whatever? Yeah. I, I use Theriero, so mine are always like, you know, like Hold on, on the green. This is just their blend that they have that is the thing to kind of, 